Hi, Daniel Hall here. How am I doing? I'm progressing, percolating, and evolving. And in today's video, I'm so excited because I'm actually gonna walk you through how to start your own publishing company and consistently earn six figures plus per year. And if you're watching this video right now, you likely think of yourself as an author, an expert, a course creator, or some kind of content creator. And if so, then this video is definitely for you. And I'm so excited about this video because I know that by implementing the tips that we're gonna cover today, that not only can your publishing company be very financially rewarding, but it's personally gratifying as well. And in my not so humble opinion, okay, the publishing model is probably one of the best business models in the world. And the reason why I say that and feel that way is because my own business has consistently earned near seven figures every single year for most of the last decade. Now, if you are brand new here, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell notification so that you will be notified every time I release one of these new videos for you. And mama mia, I've got some great stuff coming. Also, if you would go ahead and smash, that is Hulk smash, the like button, that would be awesome as well. It really supports the channel. Now, in my experience, there are four essential steps to creating a publishing company that will actually be super successful. The very first one is to choose a niche that can sustain you. And we'll talk more about what I mean by that in just a moment. And at the same time, that you're passionate about. Now, the second thing that you need to do is you actually need to build a platform or a group of raving fans around that niche. And then third, you should both create new properties that you yourself create as well as co-create or publish other subject matter experts in that niche. And fourth is you're gonna simply rinse and repeat steps two and three. Let's jump into this right now. In step number one, you need to actually choose a niche that will sustain you and, and support you, which means, by the way, that you choose a niche that has lots of passionate buyers. And of course, you need to be passionate about whatever it is you're selling as well. Now, how do you know that a niche that you're thinking about getting into actually has lots of buyers? Well, one telltale sign is to actually look at whether there are other competitors in the niche as well. The more competitors that you have and the more outward successful they appear to be, chances are there are lots of rabid buyers in that niche. You must also ask yourself, hey, do I love this subject matter? Do I love this niche? In fact, am I passionate about it? The thing is, is that if you have both of these things, that you're number one, passionate about the niche, and number two, there seems to be a lot of buyers in that niche, mama mia, we're talking about that is gold. And on the other hand, sort of the other side of that coin is if you don't have those things, chances are you're dead in the water before you even start. Now, I know that you probably can't tell this from my impeccable sense of fashion, but I actually used to practice law and I quickly figured out that I was much more collegial and not confrontational and I actually started to look for a way out. Fortunately, I stumbled into publishing when I wrote and then self-published my very first book, this little beauty right here called Speak on Cruise Ships, Eight Easy Steps to a Lifetime of Free Luxury Cruises. This thing actually launched my career. Now, this was a book that I actually self-published and it became very successful. In fact, I cut my teeth on the whole publishing industry with this book. And one of the cool things that happened is the book went on to actually earn over a quarter of a million dollars. Heck, it's still making money to this very day. But I cut my teeth on the whole publishing industry with Speak on Cruise Ships 
And that's actually what launched me into the whole arena of publishing. So because I learned so much about publishing and book marketing, I actually then next decided to publish a course called Real Fast Book. Basically that encompassed my new skill set that I learned in publishing my book and making it successful. Now here's the really cool thing is that course then went on to be even more successful selling in excess of probably $500,000 the last time I checked and it actually started my brand, my real fast brand. That, that was the, the beginning of it. The inception of the brand was in with real fast book. One thing that you could certainly model here is that as you develop new skill sets and master new things in your own book publishing business, then you could actually look back and create new courses and new materials for people that also want to do that same thing. This is a tried and true model that actually serves me to this very day. Now here in step one, as I said, your niche must sustain you. There must be lots of buyers in the demographic, but also almost as important is you really should be passionate about it as well. And the reason I say that is not every day in the publishing business is a good day. You're going to have some down days and it really, really helps you to be consistent and keep on going if you really truly love the subject matter. That's one of the reasons why it's very important to have both a really good sustainable niche that you're actually passionate about and it makes a great hole to build a base for your publishing company. I just wanted to dive in a little further on this idea of finding a sustainable niche with a lot of buyers. So what does that actually mean? Well, it means that there is a fairly large universe of buyers that will buy it. But what's a really good way to figure that out, to figure out whether the niche that you're contemplating actually has this group of buyers? And that's when I really strongly suggest that you actually start at what I consider to be the world's best buyer search engine, otherwise known as Amazon.com. If you were to look at the Amazon.com bestseller list, does your niche fit neatly under one of the broad bestseller list? Because if it does, chances are it is really, really a good niche or potentially a good niche because if Amazon is dedicating an entire sort of subcategory to it under a major best-selling category, then chances are there is a very, very large population of buyers out there. Another factor in your evaluation is, are there other publishers that publish material in your niche? And you know, the more of them there are, and once again, the more successful their titles seem to be, there probably are lots of buyers behind that niche. So the ultimate litmus test here is do you have an indication that the uh, actual marketplace is, is viable? Look at whether your category or your subject matter relates in some way to basic human needs like, well, sex, money, food, shelter, fulfillment, happiness, does it apply to those sort of broad things? And if it does, once again, chances are that particular niche is probably a good one. So in step number two, we've kind of dialed in our niche, the niche that we're gonna really build this publishing company around. The next thing we have to do is start to build a following or a platform around this niche. It's really, really important that you become a known expert in your niche. And to build a platform or a following or a group of raving fans around what you do and the content that you produce. And I do say, and I really mean this, this is really important, 
a known expert because chances are if you're watching this right now you're probably already an expert in the niche that you're contemplating going into but maybe you're not known in that niche or not knowing enough to actually start building a following around that niche, which is crucial to your success as a publisher in that niche. Because here's the deal. Platforms are super important for new authors or new publishers. And let me just put it to you this way. And I want you to think about it in this way. If you are a new author and you're trying to go to one of the New York trade publishers, and get your book published by them, you know what their first thing they're looking for is whether you have a platform. So if you consider that for just a moment, that it's that important for them that if you don't have a platform, they're not going to publish you, it's even more important for you in your own publishing company. So the question is, how do you build a platform of raving fans? I'm here to tell you that it's easier said than done, okay? It sounds good, but isn't all that easy to do. In fact, that's one of the reasons why I wrote this book, The Best Selling Author, along with my co-authors, and it's all about building a platform, shameless plug. But here's the thing, I wanna give you a thumbnail here, sort of a 30,000 foot view of building a platform. Now, one of the easiest ways to build a platform of raving fans is to not try to build an audience one by one by yourself, but rather find a audience that is already built around your niche and try to the extent possible to co-opt that audience. Now, there is an old marketing ad adage that says, Find the source of traffic and put yourself in front of it. That's exactly what YouTube is, for example. They have an audience and that audience is looking for specific subject matter. As a matter of fact, that audience is so large that YouTube is said to be, and it's probably true, the second largest search engine in the world next to Google itself. Other places like, for example, Pinterest, and Reddit also have groups of people, audiences that are congregated around specific niche. Once again, these are great ways to actually co-opt audiences that are already there, right? They're already assembled for you and your job is to sort of cleave off audience members over to your, your tribe, your school. So your job is to attract an audience by using your brilliant content so that a part of the audience on some of these major sites becomes a part of your audience. That's why if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, I'm gonna ask you to do that right now. Now, places like YouTube and Reddit and Pinterest and other places, they're not the only places that have audiences sort of congregated around specific subject matter. The next thing I want you to think about in building this kind of platform is actually engaging with, and well, first, finding experts, because there's a lot of experts out there who have their own sphere of influence and their own audiences. That's why identifying and forming relationships with others in your niche can be so fruitful and so rewarding in your own platform building. Now here, I would be completely remiss if I didn't tell you that you should have a place to send these people. And that place should be where they can get more free stuff from you, besides a YouTube channel, which is great. And I definitely want you to subscribe, but it should also be some other place where they can get, they can get something free from you, like your email address. For an example of this, in the description below, I have a link to a really cool free goodie. That's what I'm talking about you doing. Now, I could go on about other things that you can do here in step two, but I think you get the idea. The key here is that you definitely need to be building a platform around yourself as a subject matter expert and publisher, as well as the 
things that you are publishing, the things that you are bringing to the marketplace to sell. Speaking of products, that actually brings us here to step number three, and that is developing new properties that either you create or co-create with other subject matter experts. Because let's face it, you must have something to sell through your publishing company. That's what we're gonna cover here in step three. Now, when you say publishing company, most people automatically and quite naturally think books. But here's what I want you to understand, that it's not just about books. It is about any type of media that your target demographic will buy, will actually pull out their credit card and pay you for. That's what we're talking about here. Now, it, of course, it could be books, but it also could be things like audiobooks and ebooks and courses and videos and membership sites and live events even. All of that could be stuff that you could publish within your company. So my main lesson here is that you should be open to actually publishing any type of format that your demographic would be willing to buy. And of course, to reiterate, to also be open to publishing new content, new products based on your developing skill sets. And as you master one skill set, perhaps bring a course or a book to market about that particular subject. You know, this is much the same thing that I did when I went from the Speak on Cruise Ships book to publishing with the Real Fast book program to my Real Fast audiobook program. And there have been many, many more. All because as I go along, I develop new skill sets and then sort of pay those skill sets forward. I, I create courses and other materials around what I learned. And that's really what I'm saying you should consider doing as well. Let me give you an example. I co-created a course called Real Fast Doodle Profits with Lisa Rothstein. Now, Lisa is really at the top of her game as an artist. In fact, she is an artist or a cartoonist for The New Yorker magazine. And if you know anything about cartooning, that's actually at the very top of the game. So it's really an honor and a privilege to get to publish and co-create material with folks at that level. Another example is our course, Real Fast Hollywood Deal, with Hollywood producer Ken Achety. Now, Ken has 33-plus producer credits on his IMDb page, and he is actually the producer of his latest hit movie called The Meg, which has today actually brought in over $560 million and counting. And I want to give you one additional example here with my co-created courses with Amy Collins. Now, Amy has actually created more New York Times, USA Today, and Wall Street Journal best-selling authors than I could shake a stick at. And I could shake a stick at a lot of best-selling authors. But here's the thing. She and I have co-created courses like Real Fast Library Marketing and Real Fast Indie Book Marketing. One is to help authors and self-publishers to get their books sold through the libraries and also to sell books into the bookstore market. The really cool thing is, is that I have gotten to work with some of the very, very best, the tippy top people in my niche because of the publishing company and because I was open to publishing other people's stuff. But what I want you to realize is that all of the people that I associate with and who I recommend you associate with are essentially paragons in their industry, bringing credentials and know-how and influence that you couldn't touch by yourself. And I want you to notice that all of the topics of all of these courses and most of the books that I publish are of interest to the author, publisher, course creator niche. And just think about this book, Speak on Cruise Ships, all of this grew out of this book. That's what can happen. 
The key here that I want you to understand is if you want your business to continue to grow, then you're going to need to actually go to step number four, which is simply to rinse and repeat steps two and three over and over again. And as you do that, what's going to happen is you're going to get more successful, more profitable, and your sphere of influence will just continue to grow and you'll be able to attract better subject matter experts, more credentialed and, and prestigious subject matter experts like I have. So I hope that you got some usable insights from today's video. And the really cool thing is, is that I absolutely love the publishing business. Not only because it's been very, very profitable for me, but also because it has given me a deep sense of gratification knowing that those products that I have brought to the marketplace actually help other people. What really drives me and what really gets me up in the morning is knowing that I am moving the needle for good in other people's lives. So if you love this video or even just liked it a little bit, I would really appreciate if you had Hulk smash the like button and of course subscribe if you haven't yet done that. In the final analysis, this strategy, this formula that I've presented to you today is really, really reliable at building your business. And I'm going to encourage you to do that. Use what you've learned here today. So until next time, I've got a couple of videos around here somewhere. They're here somewhere. Publish on.